I, it's a very interesting thing with your television habits because I know you're home by yourself every night. And you don't watch movies at all. No. Nope. You don't watch any sports. And then you never talk about TV shows that you watch. You just said in a... I kind of have this picture of you at night like putty where you're just... Everything's turned off and you're just sitting on a couch. I guess imagining bad things until the show starts. That is basically what happens a lot of nights. I imagine a rocking chair covered in towels. Ugh, I can't stand the fact that you cover all your furniture in towels. Freaks me out. It's because the cat gets on everything. Um, Mike, Mike, you're on Uh, Ronnie, have you noticed lately all the Mel Gibson movies on Showtime and HBO, Forever Young was on last night and we were soldiers the night before? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's the smart marketing move. Um, it's just like in the same way when some comic finally breaks out after years, every shitty movie that he's had walk-ons, uh, pop on TV, uh, it's going to happen to Zach Galifianakis, I imagine, next. That, you know, remember he was like in a dumb ski movie or some shit like that that got made for like a half a million dollars. They just, everybody who owns a lesser work by a superior artist, immediately, let me get this out there, uh, the guy had a walk-on, but I'll plaster his name uh, across the, the title now, and that'll, you know, and then fucking fool people. Uh, Fez, this will be interesting to you. Larry, you're on running, Fez. Hey, guys. Uh, Fez, I'm going to solve the mystery of the motorcyclist who uh, was shot in the head uh, after he hit the deer. Autopsy report came back. He killed himself. He felt that bad about hitting a deer. I guess so. Uh, or he was just planning to kill himself, hit a deer, and said, why don't I just do it right here? Um, TK, you're on the Run of Fest show. Hey, buddies. Uh, I just want to say I came to Unmass last night and had a great time. It was a great interview, and I uh, thought Fez did a real good job of uh, keeping it all together. Fez did a marvelous job last night um, producing that show, although I have to say this, Fez, you were as nervous of, as I've ever seen you, which is a weird thing to say because you're always nervous. Right. Um, my only problem is you got some kind of grandmother chairs in there that were making my throat raspy. Um, but beyond that, I can't remember anything about a mask except before it started, Hosp walks up to me. And you're going to love this story, uh, Hicks. And he says, I always hear you talking about your nephew, Benicio. He's five years old, so I got this for him. And it was a collectible that apparently was only on the market one day a week ago. Some fucking crazy thing. I don't know how collectibles work. But it was a Dr. Peter Veckman, a Venkman, a little, I don't know what you call those dolls, action figures. Yep. So uh, I... I'm going to be able to send it down to the kid because he's obsessed at five years old with Ghostbusters. As he should be. Well, his mother's concerned because it's not like he could get in other, um, you know, conversations with kids about Ghostbusters. They're watching Toy Story or whatever, and this kid is like every night watching Ghostbusters over and over. So he's the cool kid. He's got a cool fucking action figure, too. Well, he's cool to you, but the other kids don't know this. That's the thing. I'm sure if he was hanging out in fucking Williamsburg, Brooklyn with you and the rest of the hipsters. He's invited. Yeah, I know he is, but I'm going to tell you the truth, and it's embarrassing for me to say. The kid doesn't drink. Um, I guess kids grow up soft these days. But anyway, he's a gigantic fan of this, down to the point where he tells other kids he's a scientist, and they tell him he's not. <laughs> But like he says, but I really am. Um, so Hosp, and I learned this from uh, Jimmy Carter. If you're going to do something nice for somebody, do it for their kids. And then that person feels like this whole thing of, oh, you thought of the kid. You know, because what are you going to give me? You give me something, I'm going to like, that's great. Other than if it's cigars, then you're my friend for life. But when you do something for the kid changes everything and now uh he's going to get this dr peter venkman uh thing. and the beauty of it is he'll never hear the name hosp from me it'll all be like you know nice 
After last night, I wish I hadn't heard the name Hosp. It was... Uh, at, for, he's at the cool table with me now. Yeah, uh, not with me. What happened after the unmask, I'm walking Bruce Valanche out. I see a lot of the audience headed down in the elevator. Well, I'm, everybody knew that you were trying to make this connection with Bruce Valanche, and then you had him do a promo in the other room. And I don't know whether you noticed this or not. Mm -hmm. The entire audience watched you through the window with Bruce Valanche because they knew that it was important to you. Right. So I just wanted to have a moment with Bruce Valanche. Mm -hmm. So I figure I'll... You've been wanting this for some time. Yeah, so I figure, you know, I could talk to him about a couple of things. I could, you know, go to... I could take him down on the elevator back to the lobby and walk him out the door, thank him for being a guest, and have my in. Right. So... We get on the elevator. Bruce jumps on with um, a lot of the audience members, including Hosp. I'm trying to have my elevator moment, just trying to make a connection. Oh, no. Here comes Hosp to talk about funny T-shirts and where Hosp gets his funny T-shirts from and just dominates all the elevator time uh, to the point of where now... Uh, and then won't step aside once we get out of the uh, out of the elevator, and that was it. I blew that opportunity to have a moment with Bruce Valanche because Haas was blocking the entire way. Mm. Well, I even let you ask your little question at the end of the show. Thank you for that. And it was the only time that I thought Bruce kind of, and I'm not saying this to you, but disconnected a little bit. Because the question you ask, he doesn't think is a big deal. Uh, you were asking him about the bravery of coming out and how somebody faces that. And Bruce basically gave the who cares, don't even do it thing. Mm -hmm. It's not even important. Um, and I looked at you. And then later when I said, did you get to talk to Bruce at all? Did, I don't know whether you know this. Um, but you kind of went away. You didn't even answer me. And you were just kind of staring off. Yeah, I was reliving my Haas moment in my head. So, no, the answer was no. I didn't get a chance to. Well, let me ask you this. When you got on the elevator with him, how many people were on? There was probably, like, about eight people on that elevator, you... which didn't help. Well, that doesn't help at all because that's not even dice formation. No. That's that's above dice formation. You and Bruce should have waited for one. Why didn't you say, wait, I'm taking you down the private elevator? I was trying to do that. He was already on it, and I thought it was going to be awkward to pull him off of an elevator he was already on. You know, when uh, Oprah was here, she had her own elevator. This is how excited Fez was about Bruce Valanche. Uh, Queen Noor of Jordan, is she from? Yep was here yesterday, and Fez stole one of her fruit plates. I thought we got that separately. He stole it? Yeah, he took that. Um, it, I guess she didn't eat anything off of it. I don't she know. She never touched it. Famous people, it's got to be the weirdest thing in the world. Wherever they go in life, there's a fruit plate. And if it's in the morning, there's a fruit plate with mini bagels. Never a fucking normal-sized bagel. Tiny bagels. But if you're a very famous person, you've got to be thinking, does everyone think I have fucking scurvy? Enough with the fruit plate. And what I loved about it, she's the fucking queen, right? So, oh, let's do something extra. Let's get her a fruit plate. It wasn't exotic. It was the same fucking fruit pl uh, plate that you get in any deli in town. Still even had that stupid plastic thing on top of it. It's not as classy as you people think stop trying to give the famous uh fruit plates people are still trying to feed caesar grapes uh roger you're on fez so fez is hosp a cock blocker i don't understand the i don't understand what you're trying to get from bruce valanche fez to be totally honest I was trying to get a connection. I know I, I asked my question and I got his answer, and I was going Your to... Your question is antiquated. Mm -hmm. It no longer matters. That's the thing that you have to get through your mind. 
What I was, my plan in my head was to get a moment after the show with him and say, by the way, thank you for answering my question and see if that led to another opening and maybe some more advice. Do you know that he didn't even know what you were talking about? Like, he didn't make the connection at all? Yeah, I noticed that, yeah. Um, he's oblivious to it because it no longer matters in a modern world. You, whatever this drama thing that you're feeling, mm -hmm. you missed it. The timing is gone on that. Live a life. Um, S Steve, Steve, you're on the Ron and Fez show. Uh, good morning, Ron and Fez. Yeah. I'm really perturbed to hear that a queen was there yesterday, and they were giving her fruit plates mm -hmm. for a queen. We have a, the King Jimmy Norton. And he can't even get a birthday cake from the company? It, what is this world going to? It was an embarrassing little Jimmy Day. Uh, what used to be the highlight of the social calendar, uh, excitement levels, live bands. Remember the boob cake and everything with the tranny with a little, little dick on it and everything? Oh. Everybody, you know, there was always a buzz of excitement, uh, just a thrilling amount of excitement that would go on. And according to Steve C., he can't get a, uh, a lousy cake. I do a radio show. You can't call here in the middle of my radio show. I do a fucking radio show. Anyway, where were we? Oh, I was saying I felt bad for Steve C., who can't get a cake out of the company for Jimmy Norton Day. Uh, I don't know what happens. I, and I, I, well, you know what? I will say this. Opie predicted that when we moved just seven blocks down, everything would change. And I thought to myself, he's being a little dramatic. I understand we have this big, beautiful studio. We have it, you know, we can run around, do whatever we want. But there's, you know... This is what happens in radio. So what? Who cares? Wherever the mic is, who cares? I couldn't have been more wrong. And yesterday proved it 100%. Now, the queen, if it means anything to you, she got a shitty fruit plate anyway. That she wanted nothing to do with, obviously. And if we were up on 57th Street, she would have got a tranny cake. And enjoyed herself. Um... Pat from Florida has a spy report. Spy report. Spy report. Spy report. And why didn't we get a cake for Jimmy yesterday? I figured there was going to be a cake. There's always been a cake. That's not what I'm talking about, Fez. Pat, you're on the Ron and Fez show. Hey there, Ronnie B. Well, it seems that a one Mr. Anthony Cumia has his eye on a new girl, Selena Gomez. All right, what's the whole story there? Well, she's newly turned 18. She's a Disney girl. Uh, let me take a look at her. Uh, and I, I uh, suppose she's lost all interest in New Girl, who every day dresses up like fucking Doris Day. I don't understand what, what she's doing. Uh, let me take a look at this Selena. Go oh, God, she's little. Yeah. She was she, in the building today. She's little. She's an infant. I don't know if this is an up-to-date uh, picture of Selena Gomez, but she's wearing Huggies. Um, uh, Greg, you're on run Uh, hey boys, yeah, I just wanted to say, I miss, uh, fifth floor in the old Steinway building. I'd been in there a couple times to see a couple live gigs, and, uh, that place had a cool party vibe to it. I'm not so sure about this new place. A little too corporate, I think, for my liking. Well, um, it is very corporate, and I'll tell you this. I run into Ope today, and he's trying to say, Patrice doesn't think that you like him. Patrice wants to spend time with you. But, and while he's saying this, uh, there's our PD, Rob Cross, talking business in his ear. And uh, the other PD, Gary. I was going to say Gary. Gary, talking in his ear. They can't stop. Like, maybe you can do more live reads. Maybe, you know, it's great. Every, the fans love live reads. And if you would jump in on a couple of them, you know, have fun with it. You know, it's just that. 
and I'm th- and I actually had to say that I go the, leave the man alone. He's walking to the elevator. They'll follow him into the pisser. These guys. No decency. It's like fucking Fez with Bruce Valanche, just following him around, wanting some kind of wisdom. Like you were treating Bruce Valanche like he was Jesus, right? You were so excited about it. Then you have these old grandmother chairs. And you remember what it was like when you were a kid and you would sit in a chair that your grandmother had? And not only was it old and itchy, but it had some kind of filth dust that would come up. And it was, it was like we were sitting on a mummy's face. Each of us had fucking straddled a mummy's face, fucking its mouth, as we're attempting to talk about his uh, storied comedy career. That try. Uh, and actually, he goes, "Who got these chairs?" And I go like this, "A uh, little Miss Closet." That's been bothering you. Um, well, look who it is, my new favorite buddy in the whole world, Hosp. Hosp. Boo. Hey, how you doing? Hosp, I can't tell you how you touched me yesterday. I don't know. I, it's, I always hear how much your nephew gives you that enjoyment, and I wanted you to give him that so you could have that super special bond. All right. If we were playing prices right, right? Yeah. What would the price be on that? Uh, higher than your average action figure. All right. That's, to me, price doesn't matter, but I know if you want higher, it's really, really good. Right. That's what uh, I like to hear. I like to hear I did something higher for you. So, Hosp. You're in the fucking cool club with me right now. Well, thank you, Ronnie. I've never been more annoyed. I, I don't know what I did to you, Fez. You took up my Bruce Valanche time with your crazy t-shirt talk. He was the one that started the conversation. And why did he start that conversation? Because you you bellied up to him with your funny t-shirt on. You basically Are you really put- mad at him? Yes, I'm annoyed. You put it right in his because face. Because here's what's fucking happened. Hosp did something interesting for the man, right? Gave it like he did with me. Here's something that you're interested in, and so am I, where you're like, I have some interest and I want to take from you. You see the difference? Hosp is giving, you're taking. Nobody wants to fucking have a stranger walk up to them and say, heal me. Heal me, Bruce Valanche. And at that point, I thought it would be something fine to do because immediately after the unmasked was done, which was very good, by the way. Thank you very um, much. You and Bruce went into the um, production studio, and everybody in the room thought you were having your moment then. Everybody thought that, Fez. And I actually even said, oh, my God, look, everybody, it's Fez Watley with future Fez Watley. And then we all laughed and pointed Yes, at that, at that point, I was still conducting some business. I was having him sign some things for us and making sure he got promos done. Taking. Constant taking of his time instead of giving. Why didn't you have some stupid fucking shirt that he likes and he could have put it with his other 8,000 shirts? You could, have, you could have had some kind of fucking scene there with him. Um, all right, here's Ian... Uh, has a question yeah. for Hosp. Go ahead, Ian. Hey, I was just wondering what makes Fez more important than Hosp to address Bruce Valanche in an elevator. Yeah, what is it about you, Fez? Because that- everyone knew I was trying to have my Bruce Valanche moment. It was documented from weeks ago that I was trying to make a connection with Bruce Valanche. And we assumed you had it. And you're a person with elevator phobia. To get into the elevator with eight, nine other people... Yes, exactly! That's what I was willing to do to have my Bruce Valanche moment. But you're shaking your shirt in front of him like you're some sort of titty dancer. (laughs) What? I was standing there and... Oh, Ronnie, it was like that. He he practically... He bellied right up, gut to gut with Bruce Valanche, and then pulled the sides of his T-shirt... So that Bruce Valanche had no choice but to look at it. But see, here's what he was thinking. He's thinking, Bruce Valanche is going to be there, the funny t-shirt guy. I'll put on a funny t-shirt and have this moment of connection. 
I wasn't even looking for that. I, it's one of the regular T-shirts I wear. He's a funny T-shirt guy. Mm-hmm. Hospital always has great T-shirts. Fez. I've never noticed. I think that's the first time I've seen him in a T-shirt. What did yesterday say, Hosp? Well, actually, trying to be a little bit witty. It's um, it was Raiden and Sub Zero from uh, Mortal Kombat doing a hospitality fatality. Let me just say that. that's fucking brilliant. I didn't even I'm get it. it. I'm loving it. But yeah, I, and I mean, he engaged me. And what am I supposed to do? Just oh, I'm sorry, I'm not allowed to talk to you. This man wants to speak to you? He had no choice but to engage you. You practically sat on his lap in the elevator. But I don't understand why you're saying this. Bruce was like was this really outgoing guy. When I went to see him in the green room, I started thinking, I got to get out of here because he's telling all these funny stories and I want him to do it in front of the audience. Why didn't you use that time? Why were you just going around getting mummy fucking masks for us to sit on? I was still getting the studio set up. I had business to take care of. I wanted a relaxed moment. And you're never more relaxed than you are on an elevator. <laughs> He's right, Fez. That wasn't your spot. That wasn't your time to shine. Yes, and I was willing to just to get the ride down and to walk him out. And then when you were done with the T-shirt thing, you just stood there. You didn't walk away then and let me have my moment. I was talking to Mikey Boy. We have the feeling, Fez, no matter what happened, you would have squandered your moment, and now you get to say I think uh, it's Haas' uh, fault. And I'm, I'm not going to... Uh, first of all, Hosp is my pal now, and the only problem I have with you is calling him Monkey Boy. It's Mikey, Mikey Boy. Boy. Oh, I thought he said Mikey Boy. I'm sorry. No, you said Monkey Boy, and that he <laughs> hates being called that. That would be a funny T-shirt. Why don't you get that printed up? Show it to Bruce Valange. There's people that they have sites on the internet that say Monkey Boy, and it's just, I guess they're photoshopping pictures of Mikey Boy with uh, monkeys. By the way, uh, Chris, two people said that they can't get into this building to see me too. Uh, Stalker Patty has no idea who you are. What? And Monkey Boy. Uh, says he would like to come in. His kids and his wife have went away for weeks. It's party time. All right. And I said, you're invited every day. And he let on. He couldn't get beyond the force field that is Chris Tanley. Well, I have to protect you guys. I know. Where uh, Dave used to say, oh, come on in. Ron puts his wallet down there in case you want to go through it. This is some of the stuff that Dave used to say to people. Uh, another problem we had. Grab the mic over here, new girl. Uh, is this. You had to be moved at the last moment because the people felt if you were sitting in the front row and Bruce Valanche said something funny and had to look at your expressionless face, <laughs> it would destroy an unmasked. Is that the truth? That is the true story. People said that. Yes. The, the <laughs> staff actually had a debate if she sits there with that stoned Easter Island face of hers not reacting, because you're not a natural laugher or a smiler. I tried, though. We, we, I thought me and Bruce kind of made a connection. Of Did course, you? everyone has not but me. <laughs> well, you wore a funny T-shirt yesterday. By the way, what do you dress? You dress as Doris Day's granddaughter today? <laughs> what is this? <laughs> it's like, <laughs> what is this nice girl look you're for? I'm a nice girl. But you've lost Anthony's uh, 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 attention to Miss Selena Gomez. Uh, she's younger than me. I think it's just, you know, can't compete with that. Well, you could play younger. <laughs> um, well, Hosp, I've yeah. never said this to you before, but you are completely in the right. Completely. Oh, what? I, I, yeah, I didn't see what, what the issue was. The issue is you muscling in. Elbowing me in out. And had a conversation. I don't know what I did wrong. Everything. Look, you did, first of all, Fez, just like in basketball, if you let somebody muscle you out, that's your fucking fault. This was your position, and I don't know what, we're into three different times now, that you've wanted to have some kind of uh, heart to heart with Bruce Valanche for whatever reason, mm -hmm. and the man isn't looking for it. Do you know what I'm saying? If I could have had my moment, yeah, it's not 
a big deal to him. He's, he answered your question with basically a very kind, who cares? It just doesn't matter. Now, let me come over here and talk to new girl, who we're now calling Sweet Polly Purebred for the way you Maybe the NG could stand for a nice girl, you know? You want to be nice girl? Uh, and you said some. You you actually won on the last uh, mass the chance to uh, co-host an hour of the show with me, and you said a listener gave you bad advice yesterday. No, I said he gave me good advice. What was the advice? He told me that I think it was hot. By the way, way to go with the bit. Go ahead. What's the okay. good advice? <laughs> he told me to um, try and find topics that because I said I was having trouble. I'm like, what are we and Ron? What are we going to talk about? And he said, go for something that you know about and keep Ron on his toes. Well, first of all, this is an interesting thing. You get advice like that from Hosp, but not from Fez, who you think would be there for you to kind of massage you through this. <laughs> well, it was his big day yesterday. I didn't want to, you know. Um, here is uh, Adam. Adam, you're on with Ron and Hosp. Uh, yeah, I was just wondering. Fez had such a big problem with Hosp. Why wasn't he just a dick to him like he is to all the callers? Fez is not a dick in, uh, uh, well, I'm not saying he's not a dick, but he doesn't do the screaming in real life or the I will kiss, kick your ass in real life. He has a tendency to do like he did with uh, yesterday when I said, how did it go with Bruce Valanche? And he didn't talk to me. His head went off to the side and he just, you ever see those fucking um, like sci-fi movies where the robot kind of runs out of energy? That's what happened to Fez yesterday. He just kind of overloaded and turned the other way. The Terminator. Yeah, I guess he just kind of shut down. And I thought, well, this is odd. Kind of like shell shock almost. Just was totally out of it after that fucking unmasked. Well, what had happened was I was deflated. I had lost my last opportunity to have a moment with Bruce Valanche. Yeah, but l let me, that moment was over. You were talking with another human being, and human beings just don't fucking stop talking and shut down. It's just odd. It's odd behavior. Um, let's go to Alex. Alex, you're on a Fez. How's it going, guys? Yeah. I want to ask Fez a question. Fez, what's the end game here? Like, close your eyes and uh, picture what happens if you actually make this connection with Bruce Valanche. Where's it going? Well, then maybe, you know, we, start, we have lunch sometime together. Here's what he wants Bruce Valanche to say to him. Oh, my God, Fez. You've made such a bru uh, uh, just a brave decision here in 1964 to make this pronouncement. But that war has already been fought. No one cares. You could be in the cabinet now. That's done. It's over. New girl, what happens to you when... <laughs> what little thoughts go through your mind when others are speaking? This, about, that's this, why she got moved out of the front row. I was thinking about Lindsay Lohan. This, why? You just, <laughs> you just, what? That was fucking a half an hour ago. And what What thought comes just like, Lindsay Lohan. She looks terrible. On Lindsay screen. Lohan. Yeah, she looks terrible. She's on her way to fucking jail. <laughs> I don't know whether you ever went to fucking jail before, but you're not all that happy about it. I've never been. No one's ever like, oh, great, lock up. <laughs> this is going to be so much fun. It's not like she's on her way to Tahiti. Um, all right, here's Glenn and Phil. He's got something for you. Go ahead, Glenn. Hey, uh, I just want to say, how great would it have been if Fez maybe had an Obey Fez shirt as a topic to start, you know, either give it to him as a gift or be wearing it to to start a conversation about T-shirts and then leading on to, you know, secret astronaut talk. I don't know why you didn't have some kind of a fun T-shirt for him. I was trying to be a professional. I didn't want the man to come in and feel like he was being mocked for his T-shirts. Well, he, he didn't feel like he was being mocked, but the thing that you said that he doesn't recognize who you are mm -hmm. or what you're doing is absolutely true. He doesn't get it. And even when you brought up that whole thing that all of us in the room got where you were going to, he didn't. And he ended up doing a Howard Stern joke about it. And I saw how crushing that was to you. And I'm going to tell you the truth. You know what I, I felt like? 
is like one of those little league dads who sees that his son finally gets put in the game and you have that thing instead of, oh, this is great, he's playing, that dad will have that don't hit it to him thing, don't hit it to my son. That's how I felt as a slow roller went right through Watley's legs. And 6-5, his team loses. That's what happened. Hospital, you, on the other hand, hit a fucking three-run walk-off. That was unbelievable. Well, you know, some people just can step up in the moment. Oh! oh and make an ass of themselves. Look at my pretty T-shirt. Look at my pretty T-shirt. How did he make an ass out of himself? He had a Bruce Valanche moment. Uh, the, oh, he was embarrassing the way he threw himself. The Hollywood Squares guy. Um, and being a geek fan, he admitted being a writer on a show that was insane to me yesterday, and that impressed me even more. So uh, it, it meant a lot to me to have that moment that he approached me to start. That I didn't have to he had no <laughs> choice. You were right up on him. You were I wasn't rubbing up on Bruce Valance. You were, you had this goofy T-shirt right in his face. He had no idea. choice. You could have turned and faced the elevator door. All right. After he started talking to me. No, before. Here's the thing, Fez. Oh, you are so out of reality. You're. I'm the one with the problem, Fez. I know. You, yes. Your ability to connect with. Bruce Valanche, you've tried three times. It's gone now. Mm hmm you Yeah. Know, we've done the unmask with him. Right. That's going to air and that'll be it. We you know, we don't double up on the unmask. That'll be it. What have you learned from it? Um to wait till wait for a second elevator. The one that Hosp isn't on. <laughs> but life doesn't work that way, Fez. You had your opportunity. Do you wish you would have said something to him or do you just starting to get that not everybody is engulfed in this thing that's got you upset as you are. I wish I had said something to him. I wish I had gotten the opportunity. You could have. Next time, make your Haas moment. Look for that Haas moment in life and hosp it. Head right in there <laughs> and hosp it. Get I'd it like done. That, on t Ron. that sounds good. Yeah, I'll just shake my chest at him next time. Uh, LT, you're on the Yeah, I called 866-ROUND-ZERO-HUSH and got through. Oh, <laughs> shut up, fatty. Gee well, whiz. I think it's done with that stupid voice anyway. Yeah, that's old school. Yeah. Now, Fezzy, I was wondering, what kind of formation did you have in the elevator? Was it four corners? And um, I'm sorry, I, I can't tell the two men voices apart. Is this Hosp or Lady Trucker talking now? Well, this is a more masculine one, Lady Trucker. Yeah, I can't argue that. You probably got more facial hair than I did. <laughs> Absolutely. Look and a grabbed... bigger dick. All right. Oh. Let's not start fucking attacking her dick size. Thanks, Lady Trucker. She's got the dick that God gave her, Fez. There's nothing you can do about it. Maybe you can get it in extents. Uh, you were saying today a bunch of the O&A interns are hitting on you, right? Right. Which one in particular? Which one's the most annoying? Because you said you have no interest. No, I feel bad. He wasn't hitting on me. He was just trying to have a friendly conversation. I, They're giving him a hard time. Who's they? The other interns? or No, some of the producers. All right, write the name down. Of the intern? Yeah, write the intern's name down. So, You know, she comes here, Fez, and it's tough. For, you know, mm -hmm. I'm glad that she's got this internship so she sees what a... <laughs> Uh, that happens here. Now, here's the problem with this guy. He that, that's his name, right? Yeah. He, Love Buzz also hit on the little red-haired girl. So the last intern that they I They told had. me that. I said, I'm sloppy seconds, and he was like, yeah. So you you actually are saying you're already sloppy? No. <laughs> it was a joke. That was a hell of a one. But you get, you can't sit there and start talking about the texture of a vagina with these guys and have them think like, oh, she's just joking. You don't have the one of the boys type thing. You're the nice girl, like you okay. said before. Don't sit around and talk about that. Um, if anything, just say that you're so dry that uh, it's becoming a problem. That's what um, I'll say next time. John, New York, you're on my face. 
Hey, I wanted to ask Fez, what's so special about Bruce Valanche where you can't go next door to Alcu and ask Frank or any of those guys? They could give the same advice Valanche could. Yeah, what is this craziness that you have on Bruce? It's a little obsession with Bruce Valanche. I'm a big, big fan. Right, but that doesn't, um, that hasn't worked for you. No, last night was my last chance to make it work for me. Here's board guy in, in Canada. Hey, Fez, I got your answer. You can go in the time machine with Marty McFly to the enchantment under the sea dance, and you guys can be best friends and marry and have two retarded-looking children. Fantastic idea. Eastside Lama said, have you thought of this from Bruce Valanche's point of view? Well, yeah, that's why I wasn't trying to be pushy like other people in the elevator. His point was this. Lama's point was he was happy to interact. And as a matter of fact, <clears throat> and I don't know what happens on these unmasked, as I'm walking up, he did not know that the audience was for him. And then he's gone, Real wait, they're here? And he's like, yeah. And then uh, when we walked out, he goes, where did the, these people come from? And I go, they all wanted to see the unmasked with you. He goes, I don't normally get like a straight audience like that. That was really crazy and different and fun for me. And he goes, I was really, you know, on guard because I didn't know what references they would make. So you would have had, you know, you were like Bruce time should have been leading up. I've booked you an audience. I've got you these really old chairs. You're going to feel like you're sitting on a mummy's face. All that uh, was explained except for the chairs. He had no idea. Did you tell him himself? Yes. Why doesn't he have an idea? What is it that happens with you and people where you say something and they don't understand you? I don't know. Maybe they just don't believe me. Uh, here's Mark. Mark, you're on Hey, buddies. Ronnie, you sound like a million bucks. Thank you, my friend. Hey, Fessy, I do have a question for you. Bruce Valanche is definitely a, a bottom. Don't most bottoms want to have a manly top? What do you think you would have a shot with Bruce being another bottom? I didn't say I wanted to have sex with Bruce Valanche. But he may be seeing you as a uh, bare competition. Well, that was not my intention at all. No, girl, you know what a bear is, right? Yes. No. No. You don't think he is? You think he's just asexual? No. Why are you crying? I feel bad. I think we need to look at this from a positive angle. All right, what's the positive angle? I think that maybe now that you're not expecting it, you know, something will come out of nowhere. Maybe you'll run into Bruce and it won't be awkward. It'll just be... You sound like a dull fortune cookie right now. <laughs> well, if he had worn the t-shirt, it would have been, you know, if he had worn like a Why funny t-shirt, it would have been corny. Honey, here's what you need to Thank do. Thank you. Yeah. You, you ought to write a book called Let Me Bore You Into Happiness. <laughs> How am I going to do an hour with you? You <laughs> need to, seriously, you need to get a little excitement going here. I'll work on it. Um, Mike, North Carolina, you're on a fez. Yeah, um. Why can't Fezzy just pick up the phone and call him? He's been on the show. You've got the report. He's got his number. Say, hey, look, I wanted to ask you something, but I was a little embarrassed at the time or whatever. We didn't have a moment. You got five minutes? I don't try to give Fez a lot of advice here, but the advice would be this. Cut fucking bait. Mm -hmm. That's too awkward. The obsession thing got weird. Uh, Paranoid's actually written a song about it. It's too much. You can't fucking... You know, your thing, when it comes to being a professional, you can't expect a guest to somehow change your life. I was just looking for a little advice. I just gave a you the, slight moment. I gave you the advice. Cut bait, sit in that house with your cat. And that's basically the same advice New Girl had, right? No, he's not going to meet anyone sitting at home with a cat. But but didn't you say something will just come to him, fall in his lap? Well, I don't think you have to think of it as the final straw. You might run into Bruce somewhere now, and now you have something to go from. Fez thinks that he's going to look out his window, <laughs> see somebody like on an umbrella floating into his window, and it's going to be Harry Poppins, and it's going to change Fez's whole life. <laughs> I kind of like that, too, though. I'm optimistic. Yeah, you're optimistic because you've got these little animals that all want to bone you. <laughs> 
Have you had done anything in here in New York in the summer? Have you met anybody? Have you hooked up with anybody? No, only creeps. So you haven't even kissed anybody over the summer? No. And you go out to clubs every night, right? Yeah. And they're just creeps out well, there? Well, like guys from school, but not... No, but I meant during your summer in the city. No. I don't like bring home a guy every night. Well, I'm, you know, first of all... I'm not one of. I'm not like your slutty friend telling that you should do these things. I was just being curious. I know that you go out every night, and according like, to you, you're just meeting whacked out Iranians no matter where you go. Yeah, it's <laughs> something like that. Well, you don't want this love buzz, do you? Because he hits on all the other interns. We're just friends. Who wants to be friends with somebody who only wants to bone you? I wasn't sure if his name was Love Buzz or Love Bug, so I didn't know what to write, but. You know what I need to do? I've been had insomnia uh, lately. I want you to cut me a tape where you just start to tell me about your life. And if I make it 30 seconds into that without passing out cold, I won't believe it. You would be great if we wanted to keep someone in a coma. You could just be the coma whisperer and just go over there and mumble. At what age did you think to yourself? Because I think it's brave what you're doing. I think it's unbelievable when you say, I don't need a personality. I'm just <laughs> going to be blank. And it's going to work for you, Fez. No, I must have boring friends. In my group of friends, I'm, You're the, I'm funny the personality. One? Oh, my <laughs> God. I must have really dull friends. Do you really? Yeah. What, what is you and the fucking wallflowers touring the country? <laughs> it's, Maybe. Her friends go like this. You say words. Your friends must be the cast from Awakenings. I don't know what that is. Fez is old. <laughs> uh, Fez is very old. And he makes just the oldest references he can. Basically, you just gave him the Bruce Valanche. You know who would be perfect for you? Hosp. He's been in a movie. He understands radio in a way that you haven't been able to have that mentor here. He gave you that thing about keeping me on my toes and coming up with topics that I don't know a lot about, which is actually good advice. Yeah. It was good meeting him yesterday. He was a nice guy. Yeah. Um, 866-RUN-ZERO-FEZ. 866-RUN-ZERO-FEZ. Uh, let's go over here to um, Greg. Greg, you're on my Fez. How you doing, Ronnie? Yeah. Uh, Fezzy, don't you think that uh, you got to let something happen more organically? Like, Bruce Valanche, I think, was almost letting you know that you you got to just not worry about any of this stuff. I don't think Bruce Blanche thinks of himself as, like, a gay dude. I think he thinks of himself as, like, a dude who just happens to be gay and doesn't worry about the rest of it. You know what I'm saying? Yes, he's very comfortable with himself. He's very self-confident. I would have liked to just gotten some advice on that. Sean, Albany, you're on my Fez. Hey, Fez, you can't even admit what you're secret is how would you how were you planning on talking to bruce valanche about it in a crowded elevator full of listeners i was hoping to just get the moment to have the to get a conversation started we were going to then the elevator would, would have gotten down to the lobby i could have walked him across the lobby had my moment so you were going to have this whole conversation with him in, over the course of two minutes well i mean that was about all the time i was going to get I was like going to take what like, I could get. Well, you did get advice. The advice was this. It's no big deal. Mm -hmm. And keep it to yourself. Right, yeah. I thought he could have elaborated a little bit. I'll elaborate for him. It's no one else's business. Uh, and w if you're comfortable with yourself, nothing else matters. And the fact of the matter is this. You're hoping that society, friends, and family will do something that you won't do for yourself, which is accept you. Yeah, so I mean, I mean, I agree with you, but that's, but self-acceptance would have been some good advice to talk about that. But you already have it. It's there. But I mean, how to go about it. But he doesn't have that. Mm -hmm. He doesn't have this thing of being embarrassed or ashamed or humiliated about what he does. He just doesn't have it. 
But there must have been a way that he came to that. No, he didn't. It's not original sin. He did not feel it. It felt great to him. If you would listen to what he said last night, it's like he kind of hates acceptance. He likes being an outsider. Mm -hmm. He wants to be the outsider. He sees this society and liked it better when his fucking community said, we don't even want to fucking join in. But you act like from a ground zero, somebody would find something up about themselves and then immediately hate themselves and have to get over it. Which takes you back to the point that what you feel or think is already wrong. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, so I mean... But I mean, those are the people to go to. Those are the people it, that are doing it right. Right, but the fucking point is he already said it during that hour. You needed him to say it to you directly. He already said, life is a fucking ball. So what? You got it. When is your book coming out, New Girl? My book? New Girl, yeah. She's, you're writing yeah, an advice book. book. Because you said you were like really big um, with your friends. <laughs> her friends always go to her for advice. Um, oh, here's our good friend Elizabeth in Philly. You're on my Fez. Hey, Ronnie. Yeah. Um, Fezzy, what difference does it make you don't take advice anyway? So whether you get it from Ron or, you know, Bruce... You're not going to take it. You're not going to follow it. It doesn't mean that if I hear something in a different perspective that, you know, that a light switch goes on. I'm looking for my light switch, too. Yeah, but you have to turn your own light switch on. Bruce I understand that. Bruce is going to do that, that in a two-minute conversation in an elevator. I under how do you know? Well, because you've talked to how many hundreds of people, and nothing's going on, but Bruce Valanche holds the key. You never. All right, so I should quit trying anything. All right, thank you, Liz. Good advice. <laughs> you shouldn't. You should just try something, Fez, and that's the initial thing. That's the advice that he gave out there. He doesn't share this thing in, that you have in you that you hate and dis are disgusted with your own thoughts. Yeah, it's you a think that those thoughts are inherently wrong. You look at a society. And you're only focused on the people who think that it's inherently wrong. And the people who go, no, it's a blast, it's fine, whatever. All the, the wars that needed to be fought on acceptance have already been done. Yeah, I just, I was, I was, that guy is the complete opposite of me. I just wanted to have a moment to see how he gets himself in that place. Okay. And you felt like hospital in that. Absolutely. And you think if Haas wasn't wearing a funny T-shirt, Bruce Valanche would have turned a light switch in you? Um, I can only have hoped that it had happened. Yes, I would have liked to think that that would have happened. Here's what I want you to do. What's that? I want you to get on a motorcycle. I want you to drive it into a deer... See what you've done, and then shoot yourself in the head. I don't agree with that advice. Well, you come I at mean, it from a whole different <laughs> angle. You're different. It's true. You know what I, w I would have fucking uh, loved? If you would have been on that elevator, started holding court, and by the time they got to the ground floor, everybody was passed out. <laughs> I certainly wouldn't have taken the attention away you know, from Bruce. I swear to God, I, if I was standing in the lobby and the elevator came down, I would have screamed flash forward because a group of people <laughs> would have been passed down on the floor. Uh, Dan, Tennessee, you're on my face. Hey, Fez, I was complimenting you last week on how good a show you're doing. But man, why, why can't you understand? There's no magic words anybody can tell you. There's no easy way out. You just get up. I haven't asked for an easy way out. You're always looking for somebody to give you advice on what to do with your life. Just get up, suck it up, and be glad you got a good job. Go out, enjoy things in life. Take up a skydiving. Do something with your life and quit crying about it. You don't have any major problems. <laughs> 
Come on. I love Knock how upset I've gotten you. That my life is so important to you, you are having a conniption well, fit. You, you're hosting it's, a show. It's irritating to hear your shit every day. You're hosting a show. Of course they're listening to you. Yeah, but... And he, of course this gets frustrating after a while. Yes, and that was something new I was trying. I don't understand this whole... Just so you know, you didn't try. You made up a fantasy that Bruce Valanche was going to say something wonderful to you that he hadn't said in that hour of being completely open. And even when you asked him the, the question, when you if he had this gigantic amount of interest and thought that this was such an important question, he would have fallen into a serious place and put it out. But he basically said, it doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter what you do. My fucking advice, fuck it, who cares? Uh, John, you're on Renefez. Hello? Yeah. Fezzi, I listen to the show all the time. Two weeks ago, when the guy fell off the stands in baseball, he said everything turns back to you. Everything, everything, make everything personal. Now this guy tells you, don't give a fuck about any of that. You were sobbing, and now this is all you want is justification from somebody else. It's the opposite of what you say. Take responsibility for your own actions. Live your life. I have taken responsibility. For what? You want everybody to save you. You want this guy, this guy. You just gave Hosp the responsibility, Fez. You said Hosp ruined something for you. He I absolutely went... did. How? Because he was, I was trying to have my moment. All right, let me just ask you this. Why is your moment with Bruce Valanche more important than hospice moment? What has got this thing where what you're carrying? There was you, Bruce, and Hosp. He found Hosp more interesting. And I don't mean that in a bad way in saying Hosp is more interesting to you. But in that moment of time, what Hosp was bringing him was more you had the opportunity to ask him a question it was a question of your writing it didn't seem like a big deal to bruce the guy likes funny fucking t-shirts yeah but it's kind of like if you go to someone's wedding and you wear a dress that's nicer than the bride you're trying to take the tension away it's not a fucking wedding <laughs> it was a now if Haas would have got up in the middle of the unmasked that was the scheduled time started talking about his t-shirt <laughs> I would have said, Hosp, this isn't your time. But I can't act like to the audience, if the guest wants to mingle after the show, get away from him. There are some people who, you know, when the show's over, they just want to take off. There's other people who have interest in people coming up to see him. Bruce Valance couldn't believe that a room full of straight people were there. Yeah. It was terribly fucking interesting to him. He wouldn't get off that. And he's curious to know, you know, what is it that I'm doing that these people are, are fucking kind of digging right now? Maybe he doesn't always want to talk about secrets all the time. <laughs> you know, and, and, and seriously, if if I would have heard, uh, you know, Hosp went in there and started giving his fucking opinion on, you know, whatever play Bruce Valanche did or, you know what I mean, started crossing a line in ter terms of criticism... I would have said, come on, dude. You know, you're fucking invited in here. Treat the guests nice. He said, this is where I get my T-shirts. Uh, the elevator was the problem. How was it a problem? It was a bad area to bring, you know. But Bruce got on an elevator because he was ready to leave. <laughs> he, you know, he could have... I know there's fucking people who are going, I don't want to be in an elevator with people who, you know, are like fans of my work. They wouldn't want to do it. He's the one who leapt on. He could have waited for the next elevator. We got a fucking bank of eight. Um, Bob in Jersey, you're on my Fez. Yeah, hey, uh, uh, Fez, I wanted to ask you something. Do you think that maybe you were uh, subconsciously happy that you didn't get to have the, uh, the moment because you didn't get to, you, your fantasy remained intact. You never really got to uh, test it, so you can blame somebody else for it not coming true. No, absolutely not. No. I was disappointed that it didn't happen. I was really disappointed last night. Well, but you could still hold on to that, thinking that somebody else can be your knight in uh, shining armor. Coming to your emotional rescue. Right. I'm going to give you another scenario. Do you think 
that Bruce could have jumped on the elevator full of fans to get away from an even more uncomfortable moment. You following him around waiting for a thing of wisdom. Well, that didn't occur to me till just now. My point is this. He's being light about all this stuff, right? Right. You're being incredibly fucking heavy. Incredibly heavy. As if this is a big thing. It's almost like you were saying, I, I want to know, should I wear socks or not? It's just not a, a fucking huge thing in this guy's life. Um, Mike in Vegas disagrees. Go ahead, Mike. Yeah, here's the problem. This fucking hosp, he, he cock blocks Fezzi. Listen, he's a fan of the show. We know how important it is to Fezzi to talk to Bruce Valance. Get the fuck out of the way or help Fezzi a little bit. He needs a little help. We're all fans. We love Fezzi. Help the fucking guy. Don't cock block him. That sucks. Fucking hosp is a piece of shit. He was on an elevator with the guy. <laughs> he was on the elevator. Did you say anything during the elevator ride? Because uh, I've been on an elevator with you, and the only thing you ever talk to me about is what if this elevator fucking storms to the bottom? Oh, no, no. The conversation was completely dominated. But I'm saying you're not a big elevator chatter, except for you're normally in your corner, you're worried that you hear something weird. I don't know that if you would have taken that the fucking time to pitch this thing, which, Fez, you had pitched. Just a little while before. Mm hmm. And that didn't interest him, right? Right, yes. So I was just going for a follow up. Uh, Eddie, Jersey, you're a manifest. Yeah, how you doing, Fred? I um, just want to ask you what happened to the comedy pyramids? Uh, all the fun stuff, the funniest. All we're talking about is your secret and your nonsense and it's kind of selfish you're taking a lot away from the show and you know i was hoping for something funny it's been constant all week long like that uh all week long it's tuesday and i'm sorry this is what i'm going through right now i i apologize for it to hosp no i won't apologize to hosp lady trucker no way she's the worst i know who's getting apologized to no, I am apologizing if I've, you know... To who? I guess to the audience if they don't like what I'm talking about, but it's what I'm going to talk about. I apologize if some people don't like it. Uh, Nate and P.A., you're on my face. Yeah, in fact, you're acting like my ex-wife who takes no responsibility for her own actions. I mean, if I had an opportunity to have a one-on-one... -on -one with my dream girl. I mean, granted, she wouldn't be fat and hairy like Bruce Valanche, but I get it done. I don't give a shit who's standing at the fucking elevator. You, you get it done. You can't let one little fucking, you know, a, a little, little wrinkle in your plans or ruin your day. You've been planning this thing for your whole life, and you fucking blew it. You should be kicking yourself in the ass, not fucking upset because some guy's wearing a fucking T-shirt. Come on, Fed, wake up. Get the fucking thing done. There is some truth to that. Let's suppose you're in sales, and you say to a guy... Uh, I want you to buy this car because it, you know, it's way more affordable and it gets great miles to the, ga uh, the gallon. And the guy goes, I don't give a shit about all that stuff. I like flashy. You can't come back with him. You don't understand. This is very affordable and it's great miles to the gallon. He, you, you pitched him something that he, he wasn't interested in. Right, and I was just... I was just hoping that... So, I don't know what I was hoping for. Eight six six run zero fez 866 run zero fez Here's Ryan, you're on Fez. Ryan? Yeah. Hey, yeah, I just want to say that Fez, every time everybody calls in to give Fez advice or treat, give him special treatment, Fez always says he doesn't want special treatment. But then when Hoff doesn't give him special treatment, he gets mad at him. So Hosp, which way did he want it? Hosp went the opposite way. Everyone knew I wanted to talk to Bruce Valanche, that I was hoping to connect with him. But but here's the thing. And this obvious uh, shoving a t-shirt in the man's face I thought was ridiculous. Hosp likes funny t-shirts, and he likes geek culture. He finds out Bruce Valanche does. Hosp also a gigantic fan of the Hollywood Squares. 
and the Oscars. Are why, we sure on that? Why couldn't that be Haas moment? In terms of who had more time with Bruce Valanche, was it you or Haas? It would have been me. You had time with him before the show. You had time with him after the show. Nothing happened there. Then, because it didn't happen to those places, you had time with them during the show. I never let you ask a fucking question. I think we've done like 38, 39 hours. And I said, here's Fez Watley. He has a question. And it was the last question. Mm -hmm. It was one I know that you wanted to ask. I was pulling for you. I wanted it to work for you. It wasn't there. That wasn't it. You got to improvise. Um, 866-RON-ZERO-FEZ. 866-RON-ZERO-FEZ. Uh, let's go over here to Jerry in Kansas. You're on Fez. Hey, Ronnie B. How you doing? Yeah. What's up? Hey, uh, I was just kind of wondering, why is it that it seems like every single show uh, turns into the Fez show towards the end, or towards the middle and then the end, where he's crying or whining about something, and he wants dick in his ass or something like that? It's just disgusting. Why can't you bring Davy Mack back? I had never thought of that. I haven't really attempted to work things out with Dave and the company. That would be something smart for me to start to put uh, my interest into. Thanks for that great advice. I'm going to take it to heart. Um, 866-RON-ZERO-FEZ. 866-RON-ZERO-FEZ. Look who it is. Um, we haven't talked to him forever. It's our good friend Fred Brooklyn. Hey, Ronnie, how you yeah. doing? Hey, Fez. Hey, Freddie. Hey, what's up, buddy? Don't you apologize for shit. It's the Ron and Fez show, and as long as you're talking, my friend, I'm listening. And there's a lot of people listening. Let it out. Who cares if Hosp is the one that instigated all this? Let it out, my man. Thank you, Fred. Finally, Ron and Fez. And this, this last guy, why is Fezzy always talking? Just two weeks ago, it was why isn't Fezzy ever talking? They can't make up their minds, Fezzy. It's your show. It's your and Ronnie's show. I'm digging it. I agree. Thank you, Thank you so much, Fred. Uh, Fez, you know how you could turn this around? How's that? You make a really big donation to the Alzheimer Association Long Island chapter. Our good buddy, D.D. Rocks, uh, Donnie, is, she cares so much about people having Alzheimer's, she's going to walk around. Uh, she's going to walk around for our people with Alzheimer's because they can't walk. Their legs don't work anymore. So, they have Alzheimer's. Oh, that's not how that disease works. Yeah. No, it's, it, uh, it's uh, the uh, mind. Ah, ah. Uh, yeah, well, they can walk. They just don't know where the fuck they're going. That is it. So Donnie is going to do something. Go over to 202 Friends Twitter and click on that. Uh, and it's your chance to uh, have her walk for you. And she'll walk any way you want. You want her to walk on her hands, she'll do it. Um, she said she would be willing to do this in a G-string, which I can't even imagine. Now, new girl, you were telling me you love to wear G-strings, <laughs> but your thing is you wear them backwards. Yeah. And I find that a little, excuse me for saying this, nasty. Um, so 202 Friends... Uh, for our good friend Dawn, who, you know, what does she do? She marries people. She brings happiness to people's life. Uh, Lord knows she keeps an eye on Anthony for us. You know, she makes sure he gets a hot meal every once in a while. Because you stand up, Fez, I'm not going to say anything away. Anthony has a beautiful house. And every meal he eats is above a sink. This is the temporary way he set himself up. I'll just eat above the sink. That way I don't have to do any cleanup later. I would like a nice young teen like you to go over there and take care of him. I can't cook or clean. Yeah, that's not what he's looking for. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, everyone can clean. They choose not to. <laughs> it's not a skill. Um, Scott, Tampa, you're on Ron Fez. Hey, Ronnie. How you doing today? Yes. Uh, Fezzy, uh, you know, if you listen to the last couple of weeks, you've been upset when people criticize you. You're not doing it today. I think you got your answer yesterday. You understand what the answer is, and it really doesn't matter. Nobody cares. So you're just moving forward. You're more talkative today than you have been in weeks. Congratulations. Thank you for the congratulations, I you, guess. You taking any pills today, Fez? Yeah, I took some Xanax today. 
How come yesterday you were a nose addict's day? I wish I tried and I got right to maybe a half hour before the show and just had a little freak out in the office and had to go running outside. It just came over me like a wave and I didn't want to take it, but I just I did, I felt like I didn't have any choice in it. All right, uh, Fez, would you like to make the $250 donation, the $100 donation, the $50 donation, or the 25 25 sounds good to start serious, out. Serious, Fez. She's walking. Here's a How picture. far is she walking? This is a picture of her shoes. Well, it's not $25 a mile. Let's see how she does in this first one, if she's going to do this every year. She's done it for years. Uh-huh. What was the next one up? Twenty five fifty? Mm-hmm. All right, fifty. I'll do the fifty one. Come on, Fizz. It's for Donnie. How do I know she's even gonna walk? That this isn't just some sort of elaborate scam. Look at her, she's got these real she's got like little white and green uh sneakers and then she has purple laces, fun purple laces. Sounds like a nice lady. How much do you think Fizz should give? Hundred. Hundred dollars. This guy's made out of money. And people have no. Alzheimer's. You know, they don't point this out. A lot of these Alzheimer uh, patients shit their own pants. <laughs> and Donnie doesn't want to say that because she's doing it the right way. They're not the people walking then, right? Uh eight six six Ron Zero Fez. Eight six six Ron Zero Fez. Um Let's go over here to uh, Cody. Cody in Wisconsin. Hey, Ron. I think Fez would have been pissed off either way because the way he had it planned in his mind, it would not have worked out. Whether the elevator was too full, he wouldn't have been able to ask his question, wasn't even wearing that shirt, let's say. It just would not, the scenario would not have worked out the way Fezzy had it planned in his mind. Oh, well, thank you, future reader. Please let us know who's going to win the the Super Bowl. It is it's that way every day. Somebody pisses you off because your life is so important compared to everybody else's. And the way you build things yes. up in your mind, if it does not work out just the way you have it planned in your head, oh, my God, the whole fucking world's coming to an end. So, well, uh, thank you. A call from the Psychic Friends Network. Well, he's, he's looking at your past, not your future. Mm-hmm. He, he said that there's always something, is what he's saying. Yeah. I've had some disappointments. Maybe this wouldn't have been one. Nobody knows that. Regrets. I've had a few. And then again. Um, let's go over here to Sean. You're my Fez. Hey, guys. Yeah. Hey, Fezzy. Don't take this the wrong way. I love you. You're a great guy. You're always entertaining. But, you know, sometimes there might be somebody like new girl or nice girl, I should say. Or on that went and say something to their audience, but you're just dominating the conversation. Well, again, like Fez says, when he doesn't talk, people get mad. Mm-hmm. When he does talk, he is really down to one interest right now, this thing that's going on with him. And it's interesting. Some Fez is on some kind of this odd journey. Nobody uh, expected it. It's, uh, you know, he's thrashing about, he's, you know, gashing his teeth, but he's going. He's doing this somewhere. You can't uh, say that you're not uh, somewhat interested to see how this is all going to turn off for Fess. It's got to be interesting at the end. Um, Kevin, Texas, you're on run of Fess. Hey, thanks, guys. Hey, Fez, let me ask you something. Do you believe in destiny, that we create our own destiny, or is it something that's cosmically already planned out for us? And there's a second part to this, that's why I just wanted to ask. All right. I, just, I, yeah, I kind of believe in fate, where I believe there's someone out there for people. Then okay. maybe Haas protected you. Well, and here's the second part to my little question here. Now, if you think that we have some, I personally believe that we're in control of our own destiny. I don't think it's mapped out. I think we do things on a day-by-day or whatever. Now, let's say that all things are aligned or whatever, and that we are in control of our own destiny. All right, what's your point? Well, maybe, maybe, Fez, that this wasn't part of your destiny. Maybe this was just a blessing in disguise 
that this gentleman wasn't going to offer you anything. And take it from there. Don't sit there and, and, and harbor or harp on this or hold on to that feeling that, oh, my God, this guy was going to share it doesn't mean that, It doesn't mean that people can't have some disappointments in their I life. Understand, I understand that, Ben. But why, instead of uh, allowing somebody else to control your destiny, take it upon yourself to control your own destiny. All right, thank you. I appreciate it. What is it that annoys you about that advice? Because I've heard it a million times. I don't need to hear it again. Well, the fact is that you're not practicing it, though. I am trying to practice it. Do, I... you, do you not hear the Earl in you? Don't you remember when we used to talk to Earl about making changes and he would just say stuff like that? Yeah. And you used to get so frustrated with him? Yeah. And I'm frustrated with myself. Um... 866-RON-ZERO-FEZ, 866-RON-ZERO-FEZ. Uh, what's he whispering about? He whispers to you, and now you're going to write it down? Uh-huh. New girl, how long do you think it'll take for me to actually find out the note? Two minutes. Wow, that's a long time. Yeah. That's a long, long time, time radio. radio. Yeah, it really is. Um, oh. Let's go over here to... Uh, Sean, Sean, you're on the Run of Show. Hey, Mr. Bay, I want to give you a little advice that you had given to somebody else today, sir. That is, cut the bait. Let this motherfucker go. Shoot him! Maybe I think I can pull him in a boat. So I don't know what time that all is. All right, want to uh, take a break here? Yeah. Run a Show. 